We're going to continue in Psalms 25 on day 11. We're uh, 2511. For your name's sake, O Lord, pardon my guilt, for it is great. And when we start thinking about that, I think that's a very honest statement when we look at it. Oh Lord, pardon my guilt, for it is great. When you actually start thinking about that, I think sometimes when we think about guilt in our world and in our homes and in our own lives, um, we sometimes have to be very honest about it. Think about when you catch your kids or when you were a kid and got caught. Sometimes when it comes to guilt, we have to ask ourselves, are we do we have guilt or are we sorry because we got caught or are we really wanting to repent and turn around from what happened and not do that again? So we have to be honest with ourselves about our guilt because sometimes it's there just because we feel bad because we got caught. Guilt that is because we got caught is just selfishness most of the time and it, which is a continuation of what got us there in the first time or in the first place because we were wanting to do what we wanted to not what we knew we were supposed to but guilt that causes true repentance is actually profitable for us and we need to remember that um the thing that i sometimes think we forget about in this when you read it pardon my guilt for it is re it is great is that guilt is there because of our sin and we all came from Adam and sin entered the earth from Adam and so we're all sinful at birth whether you've been taught that or told that before we all are born with a sinful nature and it's easy for us to fall into that that's that's actually the default for us as man but the hard part is, is our sin equals death. And death is the part that most of us fear in a lot of things. But death can't hold me if I realize that forgiveness from sin pardons that death for eternity. And so I was reading it one time and read a story of imagine that you woke up and you were in a room full of all these file cabinets and they're all alphabetical and you walk over to the wall and you open a drawer because you find the the drawer that has your name where your name would be and you open it up and you find your name on it and all of a sudden you realize when you open this drawer what is in there is every sinful act that you have committed throughout your life and so at first you're embarrassed and you close that drawer but then you kind of open it back up to go is everything in here and then all of a sudden you realize behind you in the room is somebody in the room and Jesus is standing in the room with you and so you do not want him to know what's in that file drawer so you kind of try to hide it or you pull it out and you start trying to pull those cards out of there and so you close the drawer and he walks over and he puts his hand on your shoulder and kind of pulls you to the side. And he opens the drawer and out of fear and trembling, you're just asking him not to do it. But as he opens that drawer, he starts taking out every one of those cards. And where your name is on that card, he starts writing forgiven in red in his blood because he gave his blood for you. He takes away the guilt. He takes away the sin. But he paid the price for every single one of our sins that we struggle with on a daily basis. So when we read what David wrote, it's very easy to go, Oh Lord, pardon my guilt for it is great. Because we want to do better and we struggle with it. But the applications that we need to be thinking about on this is we need to remember and be honest about our guilt. Is it because I got caught or is it because I truly want to change? And then we need to realize our need for a Redeemer. The thing that we always kind of forget about anymore is that God is equal and balanced in his justice and his love. We're guilty because he is just. We are forgiven 
because he is love. And that's an incredible gift that he has given us. The other part that we need to remember is through Christ, there is no death. We do not need to fear death. We do need to try to walk closer with him each day because we want to serve him for, because of everything that he's done for us. But another verse that goes along with 2511, and I know it's not Pastor Shane's favorite version, but the message version of 1 John 1, 8 through 10, this is very straightforward, and I love the way it reads. It says, if we claim that we're free of sin, we're only fooling ourselves. A claim that is, that is errant nonsense. On the other hand, if we admit our sins, make a clean breast of them, he won't let us down. He'll be true to himself. He'll forgive our sins and purge us of all wrongdoing. If they, we claim that we've never sinned, we out and out contradict God. Make a liar out of him. A claim like that only shows our ignorance of God. So our guilt leads us to repentance, but we need to be honest with ourselves about the guilt and our need for that Savior. So if we could, I'd like to close in prayer this evening and look forward to the remaining 10 days that we have. But let's pray tonight about our guilt and about death cannot hold me. Lord, thank you so much for dying on the cross for our sins. Thank you so much for coming to this earth to take my place, Lord and to take everybody's place who is actually watching this, Lord. For every sin that we've committed, you've already paid the price. You conquered death, hell, and the grave, and help us to remember that, Lord. Help us to seek to be in step with you. Help us to look for your forgiveness. Help our guilt, Lord, to be a positive thing that drives us to our knees in repentance to you and helps us to seek to do better. I pray as a church you'll help us to be a church that's real with each other and with those around us so that they see your true light and your true love through us, Lord. We give you the thanks for what you've done in the first 10 days and what you're going to do in the next 10 days that follow today, Lord. We pray that you'll be with the service this evening and with the prayer time. We give you glory for who you are and for everything you've done for each one of us. Thank you for being our Father, Lord. Thank you for being our Redeemer. And we'll give you the praise in your name. Amen. Thanks, CAG. Hopefully we'll see you all on Sunday. Have a great evening.